Hey everybody, what it's up? It's Ed Gow Jr. of Dad Central along with Drew Solon of Dad Central. You said your full name this time at the beginning. Amazing. I don't usually. I don't know, but I I I just usually usually you you pause and go, okay, what what's Ed come up with this time? You just went right into it, which I absolutely love. What is going on, Drew? Well, you know what, Ed? It's because you prepped me so well. So I was ready today <laughs> to make sure that I could deliver on cue when you needed me. So thank you for bearing with me as I finally got there into the start of season two. So season what's two. up? Yeah. So what's up for me is, you know, season two of the Dad Central show and thinking about uh, what we're going to bring to the audience, uh, how we can learn from what we're actually doing and just improving on um, the work that we did in season one of the Dead Central Show. That's what's on the top for me. All right, good stuff. And before we go any further, as always, the Dad Central Show is sponsored by Dove Men Plus Care. Dove Men Plus Care believes that care is the best of a man and because when men care for themselves and others, there is a positive impact. So as Drew said, we're getting ready to kick off season two. Matt, how many episodes we got in the can? 24. Wow. Wow. One of my favorite all-time shows, 24. That's a good show. That's, oh, that's oh. a little way back, though. That's, you know, <laughs> well, we're dating hey, ourselves a little well, bit. No, no, there's something called YouTube. There's something called you can watch it on YouTube, you know, online, but great show. But, yeah, so we're excited. We're excited about season one we're even more excited about season two because we're just getting better doing this with our fathers and with you and we're just gonna wrap or chop it up for a few minutes on what we're looking at visioning in season two but as always too we want your input because we can't do this without fathers and those who love them so at the end we'll give our contact information as usual um, we talked before we did this recording, say like, what's on our alleged minds for season two? And one of the things that I'm thinking about is the whole aspect of planning ahead. You know, we've been in the last few years in quite challenging times. And it's always good, if you can, to plan ahead. And as I was saying to Drew, when I was growing up, my dad on our old RCA television had a little card, plan ahead. So many conversations I have with fathers these days are saying, are you, do you have time to think about the future? You know, cause a lot of times father does a day-to-day -day thing, but having a future plan is important. Drew, go ahead. You wanted to say something. Well, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what's on your mind that's coming up that causes you to say, it's really important that I plan ahead, or it brings to mind that example of your dad who always had plan ahead. What does that mean for you? There's a there's a lot of different facets, and we won't go too deep in here, but one of the things, I'm not speaking this in a negative light, but do you as a, does a father have a will? Those things I've encountered over the last few years, fathers that have passed away having no will, no power of attorney, no life insurance. And... Hey, I, I probably, most guys who are watching this, I suggest you even take a look at this because I believe that most fathers want the best for their children and not doing those sort of things, even examining them is a good way to setting them up legacy-wise, success-wise, planning ahead. Are you planning ahead emotionally, physically? I know we're in the first few months of a new year, tax season's coming up. Are you planning ahead to get that sort of stuff done? So not only in an economic way, but also, you know, what are you doing plan ahead to take care of yourself going forward? Because you, dad, matter, not only to yourself, but to your family and kids and probably other people that are relying on you. So what are you doing planning ahead wise to keep that relationship, first of all, with yourself, but with others in a good light? Yeah, Ed, can you talk about what's your number one, I guess, practice to help you apply planning ahead? It's an overused term a lot in the last few years, but self-care. at Self-care and having an accountability buddy. I think yeah. that's re it's really important. And I think, and I this is one of the things I'm speaking that we do sometime this, se this season that we talk about, because I know, Drew, we very much a believer of fatherhood community having a community of fathers and lots of research says that when you have goals, you're at this level, 
when you write down your goals, you're at this level. When you have an accountability partner on top of that, your goals to that level. So I, I'm, I think if we get an opportunity in season two, I think talking about having an accountability, developing fatherhood relationships, like on one of our most recent conversations, we had the relationship between a dad and his son, but the relationship between fathers with like, does, does that father have a go-to guy? So if there's a few fathers that I help that if they call me at three o'clock in the morning, I'm not saying, why are you calling me? I'm saying, where do you need me? Yeah, I think that accountability piece is so important. And especially in times when, you know, stress mounts up or, you know, you've got a lot on your plate and you're trying to juggle it all and you you might miss. So the, the accountability can help you in those difficult times. I remember a conversation with uh, Brian Ward from last season. He talked about his board of advisors. He talked about, you know, the goals. Which that I'm a part of. Himself. Yep, I'm a yes. part of that. Yeah, the goals that he had set for himself and how on some occasions his board was calling him out and oh, saying, yeah. hey, you said this was your goal. Mm -hmm. Why haven't you done it? Not yeah. in a, you know, beating him down, but more of like, hey, you said this. What are you going to do to follow through? And I think there's a lot of power in in that process, um, being able to it actually helps you, but it also helps the people who are in community. So I think that's a very powerful one. Yeah, I just want to add there, like, I'm part of Brian Ward's board of advisors, and we meet every two to three months, and he gives an update, and good and not so good, he gets that feedback, and it's all done in love. And we stretch him, because we know, we see the greater things that he can accomplish. And we, and even in between calls, we do check-ins with Brian. So that's one of the things I'd like to, you know, are you planning, if you don't have that accountability partner, even it's that one guy that you don't talk about sports all the time, but other stuff that you, you reach out to and just, you know, are you planning that succession planning? Are you planning your relationships? Are you intentional with your relationships? Do you time block? Like one of the practices I do every day is I at least take a 15 minute break every day. No one bothers me. You know, yeah. I want, I want to see, make that, I think, plan ahead and also intentional, be intentional with taking care of yourself so you can intentionally take better care of others, not only yeah. your family, but, you know, because a lot of times we, as the fatherhood community, we have to be accountable to our bosses. I want fathers to be just as, if not more accountable to your family and yourself than you are to your clients. Mm, that's a big one. Big call to action for sure. To uh, add on to your point about the accountability, I have the stat on my website. You know, the American Society of Training and Development found that you have a 65% chance of completing a goal if you commit to someone. So even if you just do the that, you make a goal and you say, hey, you, I want to let you know about this. Uh, that gives you a 65% chance of accomplishing it. When you establish a specific accountability practice with the same person, like Brian Ward's example, he meets with a board of advisors, he gives updates. You increase your chances of success by up to 95%. There you go. There you go. Like I, I was blessed. It was happening to happen on New Year's Eve. My major mentor reached out to me asking if him and I could be accountability partners. And that was wow. That was like, wow. And I've already seen, we already had a good, we already had a good relationship, but it's gotten better and deeper and we're progressing at a better rate, each one of us. Because up until the end of last year, his accountability partner was his partner. And mm -hmm. they were saying, you know, and nothing about but say, you know what? We need to try something different because we're not getting to where we want to be. Mm -hmm. So he's taken that step. So again, and I want to, I'd actually put a challenge out to the fathers and who love them right now. If you've made any goals at the beginning of the year, how are you still on track? So this is why having an accountability partner can help you keep on track with your goals because, Hey Drew, if we went to our local gyms on January 1st and we went into them now, I bet you there'd be some people we didn't see. Yeah, that's an easy one to point out because I think it's so yeah. visible. But sometimes the ones that aren't visible are the ones that trip us up the most. But maybe uh, you can 
you probably didn't always have this approach. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll wrap this portion up by asking you, you know, when did you get started and how did you get started? What's the first step that somebody who's listening to says, okay, I want to be more intentional. I want to get, what, what was the first thing you did to get more intentional with your time and how you planned? I think one of the big things is that you realize you're not achieving what you want. And then the big, the bigger step is asking for help. Mm. I think that's the big thing. And I see that with so many people that I help that one of the biggest things, if not the biggest thing that's holding them back is they're afraid to ask for help. And whatever reason they feel that, Oh, it's going to reflect on my, I've got too much pride. Ego, ego is a huge thing. Ego is a very, very big thing that, People say, well, I don't want to ask for help because it I don't want to look like I don't know. Oh, it may look that I'm weak. I, you know, going back to a conversation we had with Mike, I read something about the word meekness. And a lot of people will think meekness is weak, but really and truly, meekness is strength under control. So one of the things I want to plan ahead or, or get into more is showing fathers that strength under control is a beautiful thing. Mm. Great point. And maybe as we transition off of this, mm -hmm. you did a little foreshadowing of one of the conversations to come in season two. And that's with Mike Whitla, who is the creator of the Howdy Tunes brand on YouTube. So if you've got kids, they've somehow found this dino rock songs, that's who's going to be on our show. So we're looking forward to that very powerful conversation. Wow. 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 Like, uh, as I, I think that we've had many conversations. We haven't had that type of conversation during in any conver any season topic yet. And we're not going to tell you what it is. That's why you got to tune in on it. Teaser, teaser, teaser. Absolutely. So what about you? You know, you, people, hey, Drew has a lot going on, family. He's got a lot going on. Like he, he looks like he's got a common. Look, I know he's got a lot of stuff going on, but he's grace under pressure. So Drew, what are you looking forward to in season two? Well, it's interesting that you say that. Um, I thought of 2022 as a year of transition for me. And it definitely was in many respects for my life. But see, 2023 is also going to bring another transition. So I'm expecting a new baby in April. So uh, my oldest, my twins are uh, turning 10 soon. And then my son is seven. And so it's been a long time. And, you know, this is with a new partner because uh, in 2021, I separated and I've had a new partner. And now we're, we're living, moving on with life and, and enjoying this new season that we're in um, and transitioning. So the idea of transition has really um, been on my mind a lot as last year ended and this year begins and what I have to look forward to and wanting to transition well. And I know that uh, as I've also been looking at, you know, the experience of new, new fatherhood, um, I'm not a new father per se, but I'm going back to having a, a new child and then thinking about those who are transitioning to become new fathers. And it's one of the most difficult transitions for a man in his life when he becomes a father. In 2019, Movember published a research study about the value of social connections to help supporting men as they transition to the fatherhood and identifying some of the key challenges. So men are very unlikely to, you know, seek out friends and talk about some of the, you know, hard parts of transitioning to fatherhood. They're also difficult. Uh, they find it hard to actually share with even close friends, you know, what um, about some of these hard topics that they, they make experience. And so I think as I go into this year, my own personal transition and supporting fathers in the transitions that they have in their lives. I mean, even a, a transition is always, you're always in some respects transitioning. We're transitioning hopefully out of the, you know, that COVID era back into a new phase of what the world is like. There's transition in our careers. There's transitions in our families, in our relationships. You know, even the transition from, you know, that newborn stage into toddlers can create. And what happens for me is I know transitions cause a lot of stress. And so when I think about the show, the Dad Central show is how can we be a resource in those stressful times for fathers as they go through transitions. And I think uh, as we talk with people in 2023, I'm really looking forward to gaining wisdom, insight, understanding, practical, like simple 
know what to do, how to do it in these moments of transition that help us ease, like go through the transition a little bit better because they could potentially derail us. So that's what's on my mind as we think about this next season. There are so many things we're making this short, but I could go on with an hour with Drew right now, but I'm going to keep it short. One of the things I, I love, Drew, you, you have a word for the year. You realize that. Yes. Transition. And that's one of the things when I help individuals, especially when the beginning of the year, I say, don't make resolutions, just make a word or make a few words and align with your actions with that word of the year, which is great. And Drew, it's it's wonderful to see, and you'll have a very interesting lens when it comes to fathers, because you're going to be a father again. It's been a number of years. So your transitioning of being a father in the past to transitioning to what's being a father now, transitioning to be a, in a blended family, there are so many different lenses that if you're comfortable with our family, our digital family, that you can be giving real life perspectives on you're in like as we say in, in Canada you're going to the corner with your elbows up <laughs> so to speak in regards to it so I'm very excited and I think hopefully as we talk to more fathers may, we may want to ask them how much transition have you made in your fatherhood journey or have you had to make transitions in your fatherhood journey just a thought yeah well that's a good thought Ed and, you know, I'm happy to share uh, whatever it is that I've learned in the process of my own transitions when the time comes. I think the goal of this show yeah. is really to support. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm definitely open to those types of uh, conversations. I really enjoy engaging with men or, or those who are supporting fathers uh, around transition. And again, not that I have all the answers. All I can give is my learned experience, which is sometimes mistakes have taught me the most important lessons and wanting to do X, but behaving in Y and not seeing the result is, is a very valuable reflection. I can say, you know, here's what I've learned. Don't make the same mistake. And here's how yeah. I would, how I would do it differently now. So I'm happy to engage when the time comes. And yeah, and, and I, we, we don't want to put all the weight on Drew, but I think also when we're chatting with our fathers, asking them, Fatherhood has changed over the last few years for a number of different reasons. How have you transitioned to your the changing environment or the changing environment that's continually going on? Because one day the next, like the last fatherhood over the last two or three years has radically changed. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make sure we do the best I can. If we don't, remind us, talk about transitioning with the fathers. Tell us, communicate with us, how they, how, you know, ask them about transition because it's one of those things that at every father I'm sure we speak with will have a different perspective or how transition has impacted them in their fatherhood journey. So it's, it's really exciting to have a season two coming up. Um, anything else you want to chat before we close it down today, Drew? I'll just do one little plug because I found this show on uh, Disney plus or it's national geographic. It's called limitless with Chris Hemsworth, who's the actor who plays Thor in the Marvel movies. And it's a very interesting six um, six show uh, season uh, about longevity. And I think I don't want to, um, I guess. Give it away. Well, no, I don't want to give it away. But at the end of the day, it's got very practical, tangible insights. Plus it's kind of exciting and interesting, the challenges that they put him through about core elements of how to live a better life, a healthier life, a more effective life built off of your priorities and the things that matter to you. And it's, uh, so you're looking at things like stress, like your, your brain health and memory. You're looking at strength. You're looking at a lot of these elements that go into your physical, mental, and emotional well-being to live the best life you can. And so for the as long as you can. So it's a really uh, interesting show. Uh, really enjoyed it. And um, so just a little plug if you wanted to check something out that yeah. can tie in with this idea of supporting overall well-being and health through transitions. This might be one of them. I'll throw in my quick media plug is from a few years ago. Uh, I don't watch a lot of TV, but a number of years ago I was working away and I turned on the TV and Dwayne Johnson, the rock was on TV and he was uh, on a segment of Oprah's masterclass and it was just him 
I believe it was for an hour, talking and just sharing his journey of life. And it's quite an interesting journey if you get a chance to see it. And near the end, it was just him in front of a camera. No questions. He was just sharing. And near the end, he talked about at that time, he was with a partner. He had a child from a previous relationship. And I can't remember his daughter's name, but he said he was fooling around with his daughter one day. And he just asked her out of the blue, what do you love about me? And she, he goes, no, nah, dad, I, uh, whatever. Nah, nah. And he, he was persistent. And she came back to him and said that I trust you. Powerful, powerful few words. And he started to choke up because he said when he was 11 or 12 years old, he couldn't say that to his parents or his dad. And then his final message is, he said to fathers is, lead with love. So that's what I, you know, if you get a chance to watch it, and maybe we'll put up on the website the link you can watch it, but that's what I want to give encouragement to fathers today that, you know, how, you know, can you go to your child or children and say, what do you like about me? You may yeah. be surprised. <laughs> and then leading with love. Go yeah, ahead. Powerful example there. Yeah. And one changing the, from one generation change can be made. Right. Well, he couldn't say that about his father, but he had made whatever changes he needed to see the difference in the relationship with his child. So gives you hope. The other thing is there's this idea that success leaves clues. Mm -hmm. So you want to learn how to be successful in whatever area of life. Look at those who are doing it successfully and learn what they're doing. So hopefully we can bring some of those types of people to you on the show and you can take something away and apply it to your life. That's our goal. Excellent. So that's a wrap. Season two is here. Have no fear. And as always, the Dad Central Show is sponsored by Dove Men Plus Care. Dove Men Plus Care believes that care is the best of a man because when men care for themselves and others, there's a positive impact. As always, we love you to reach out to us. Our email address is podcast at dadcentral.ca. Give us suggestions. Guess suggestions. If you know a father that we should have here, please tell us and tell us how we can help the show get bigger, better, and stronger, and also serving more fathers and their families. If you want to listen or watch any episodes, go to dadcentral.ca forward slash podcast. And finally, we have a lot of free resources. Can I say that again? We have a lot of free resources. So go to dadcentral.ca. We're always updating and we're looking to give it a new look, but there's always stuff there for you. So as always, remember to get, oh, do you have one other thing? I just want to say, if you find value in the show and the guests that we're bringing, please yes. go ahead and like the show, like, share yes. the show with your friends, yes. put it out to other dads or other though, anyone who's interested. And if you can, please leave us a review on iTunes. We really love hearing that feedback and want to see the show continue to grow. And I'll just add to that. If you are like us on YouTube and also hit the notic notification bell. So support, 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 and tell other peoples about it. So as always, I'd like to say, remember to give yourselves grace. Don't just manage your time, manage your energy, and we will see you soon. And looking forward to growing with you over season two. Be well.